lecture of the year in physics and we want to cover quite a few concepts today because when you come to class tomorrow, uh, I know today did the, uh, or yesterday did the uh, force concept inventory and we're going to hit the ground running in this class which means that you are going to be doing a lab on your first real class day. So we need to get some concepts in place and we need to review a little bit of Algebra 1. So we got lots to do, so let's get started. Um, our outcomes, we want to define position and time and define the units that go with it. We want to talk a little bit about uh, reviewing lines and slope, uh, a little bit of Algebra 1 there. And uh, we're, going to get, we're going to get you set up to a lab called the Buggy Lab. We're going to be running these little mechanical buggies and measuring some uh, the properties of these buggies and learning a little bit of physics in the process. So um, the first thing you want to do is we're going to define position. So on the slide you can see that there's a little buggy sitting there in the slide. And a very natural question is where's the buggy? And that's exactly how we qualitatively define position. We say where an object is, but we want to do better than that. We want to know where we want a better direction than we want a better answer than it's over there or it's here or over yonder. We want an answer that is quantitative and mathematical. That's the thing with physics. We were to describe everyday things using a more mathematical and precise description. So what does this mean? It means we're going to actually define position using a process, not just a definition. So our process means we draw a number line with an origin. So there's our number line, and there's our origin. Then the position is the object's coordinate on that lumber number line with respect to the origin. So we're uh, five ticks away, so we say our position is five. Um, because we just look at our coordinate on that number line. So really, when you define position, you actually have to use that process. Draw a number line, draw an origin, um, which you can also call a reference point. And then the buggy is at a position of 5, and we call that the buggy's initial position. That's where it started, Okay, if, if you turn it on and it starts running. So the origin um, is the reference point. The buggy's position is at 5. Oh, that's where it is, and since that's where it's starting, we can even call that its initial position. So great. Um, in physics, we're going to deal with the real world, and what that means is that we can't just deal with number lines. Uh, and so I have five right here for the buggy. When you're dealing in real life, when you need to deal with a position, you're going to be measuring from some kind of origin. So when I say, where are you, you can't just say, well, I'm five. You need a unit, and in physics, we use meters, and that's about 3.28 feet. So um, you say, in physics, we say that all positions are measured in meters or fractions of a meter. We use the letter X to denote position, and um, things always move. I mean, that's the thing in physics. We're going to be dealing with stuff that moves, not stuff that stands still. So initial position is actually denoted with the letter X with a little subscript zero that you see there, and we call that X, listen for this, X not. That's how you read it. So x is position, x not is initial position, and we measure position in meters. Now time. This is a little trickier. That's the other variable we're going to use in physics. So for this buggy lab, we're going to be using position, and we're also going to be using time. Time is a little trickier. What is time? Um, no idea. I honestly don't know. Newton didn't know. I'm sure there's some great philosophical theories. Um, that's probably a conversation for you to have in college um, as you sit in your dorm room listening to Dead Mouse. But uh, for us in physics, we measure time using cycles. And that means that we use things that repeat themselves. So the Earth spinning on its axis again and again and again. We measure days that way. Or a watch hand going around in a circle, and that gives us an hour. So we uh, just notice things that happen in a sequence. In physics, the unit that we use for time is seconds. Um, and the variable that we use for time is the letter t. So again, if we review really quickly, we have x for position, x naught for initial position, t for time, and then units. Position is measured in meters, time is measured in seconds. So that's a good start. Now, we're going to shift gears a little bit. I've given you some very, very basic definitions that you want to kind of review. Um, and again, if you really want to define time, we define it. We say, measure something that repeats, and look at the sequence in which stuff happens. So everything, when we measure time, has to do with some kind of cycle that repeats itself at a regular rate. Okay. So pretty circular definition, but hey, um, whatever. Linear equations. 
This is a little bit of a shift in gears, and we're going to review this more carefully in our next lecture. But I want to do a very, very brief review of linear equations from algebra. So first, um, we're going to be doing a lab next class, and you need to know what linear equations are from algebra 1. So what that means is we got to jump in and, um, you know, this is a physics class, and this seems kind of mean, uh, and I don't mean it to be mean, it's just that you're now, most of you are seniors, and those of you that are not seniors are taking a senior level class for a reason. And so we're going to be going at a little bit of a quicker pace this year, so there's a couple things you just need to know. So here's the basic form of a linear equation. Your algebra teacher will call it slope-intercept. Um, and it looks like this, y equals mx plus b. That's the basic form. And in my mind, you should think, oh yeah, linear equations, I've done this before. This should not be new material. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. That's the basic form of a linear equation that we're going to use in this class. Now, let's actually talk about what that means in terms of graph. So here's your Cartesian, your Cartesian plane with the y-axis is vertical and the x-axis is horizontal. We plot a little line here. And then let's talk about this equation in the context of this graph here. And this is what we call a qualitative graph, meaning it doesn't have numbers. That term will pop up again. So qualitative means no numbers. It's just kind of drawn neatly, but I haven't labeled anything using any kind of numbers. So there's our linear equation. Again, let's refresh our memories. The slope is m. The intercept is b. What do those terms mean? Let's review. So right there, that little red dot there is where I cross the y-axis. It's where I intercept the y-axis. And we call that the b. That's the y-intercept. Technically speaking, its coordinates would be 0b. So that's the y-intercept. It's where your line crosses the y-axis. Now, let's talk about this thing called slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a point that I'll call x1, y1. It's just a coordinate. Let me mark a second point that I'll call x2, y2. Now, there's a thing that we need to distinguish uh, from algebra. Um, you know, there's this term that they use, rise over run. Let's review quickly what that means. So when you want to talk about rise, or when you want to talk about run, you're talking about going over horizontally. When you talk about rise, you go up at a right angle vertically from where your run ends. So rise and run, those are the two ideas. Run is horizontal, rise is vertical. Kind of intuitive, run is horizontal, rise is going up. Um, and the slope is given as dividing the rise by the run. Now we can be more precise with that definition and remember that the slope is actually given by take the y-coordinate minus the y-coordinate, x-coordinate minus x-coordinate. And you read that right there, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Notice we're going at a pretty good clip. If you've forgotten your algebra 1, this is going to be a little bit hard to follow. In our next video, we actually review linear equations, and I have you do some problems. So don't despair. There's, there's going to be some review, but it's still going to go to a fairly fast clip. Now, um, suppose you have... Now, now, this is a little bit of a shift in gears that relates to physics class. Suppose I give you a set of points, and somebody tells you to get the slope. So here's what I mean. You get a point here, and one here, one here, and they're not quite aligned if you look carefully. Okay? and you want to get the slope. So what do you do? Well, the first thing is you have this random set of points, but it looks sort of like a line. What you do is this. You're going to draw the best line through the points. And what I mean by that is eyeball it. Don't connect the dots. Kind of say, well, the line should sort of look like this. Okay. Remember, we want to get the slope of this line that we've kind of just eyeballed and then drawn with a ruler. Ignore all the points that you've plotted unless they're on the line. So we're going to ignore these other points here. You don't really erase them. I'm just kind of doing this for the demonstration or the lecture. So you've got these two points that are on the line. Now that you've done that, take two points that are on your line and use the slope formula. And that's how you get the slope. You're going to actually do this when you do the buggy laps. You're going to need to remember this part of the lecture. Um, so maybe during class you'll have a smartphone and you need to review this part of the lecture. And yada, yada, yada. I'll give you my YouTube channel so you can do that. Now, we're going to be doing the lab when I see you guys next. So let's talk about what that lab is. It is called the Buggy Lab. For this lab, you will need a timer, a buggy. Uh, this little buggy has flowers. I don't know if the buggy that I purchased you has flowers. Um, and I hope you're not too disappointed. Um, you can maybe use some... Actually, never mind. I'm just going to go on. Uh, and you're going to need a meter stick. So what are you going to do with this equipment? Um, you are going to be doing a lab where you're going to turn on this buggy 
and it is going to rule it is going to roll on the ground and you're going to be measuring its position so let me explain what's going on you're going to run the car and you're going to use the ruler and the timer to record its position at five points so just the ruler and the buggy but then you're going to record the time that the buggy crosses those points okay and then you're going to draw a hand plot of the points and guesstimate a best fit line okay and again, you're going to do that thing that I talked to you about like two slides before. Where you draw your dots, you're going to draw the best fit line. And then you're going to calculate the slope and find the y-intercept of that line. So it's a little bit of algebra. We're going to talk a bit about this more in class. And then you're going to explain to me using some ideas from physics, possibly position, possibly initial position, possibly time. Remember, we have x, x naught, and t. And you're going to use your slope definition and all this kind of stuff to talk about what do the slope really and the intercept really mean in terms of physics, not in terms of algebra. So if I say, what's the slope of this mean? And you say M, you're wrong. If I say, well, what's the intercept? And you're like, B, wrong. I want an actual word in the English language that relates to physics. So here's what I mean. This is going to be a really bad video. I apologize. So you're going to, like, you run the buggy. So there, there, and there. That's what I mean. So you're going to kind of do that sort of a thing. Um, you know what, I actually want to run that slide one more time, so i sorry that it didn't quite work. So, like, this runs quickly, and watch for it again carefully. Like, as the buggy runs, like, you would have somehow, you're going to need to record how far it's, you know, how far it's traveled, what its position is, okay, using, like, your eyes, and maybe, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you want to know where it is in three different, or five different places, like, right there, there, and there. So you're, like, you're going to have to have somebody like, on it, like being like, oh my goodness, where was it, and what did I do? And you're going to have to somehow figure out how you're going to record that position in that time. So it's actually an intuitive and easy lab to understand. Actually carrying it out is going to be tricky. So that's what you'll be doing uh, in class. And um, you're going to go to the next video now. And you're going to answer some questions about slope and intercept and line and practice some algebra. So you're going to come to class knowing some definitions from your notes. And you're going to be ready to do this lab and do a great job.